G'day, I'm Ray Heron, and that is the Go Charged Velociraptor. A couple of days before Christmas, I picked up this wee electric thing with no idea what to expect. It has a range of about 80 kilometers and is limited to 50 kilometers per hour, and it's firmly in the scooter market. And if you don't need to go any faster than 50 kilometers per hour, then it might actually be the wave of the future. Equipped with a 72 volt 30 amp battery and coming with a 240 volt standard 3 pin wall socket to charge her up, it has a set of unbranded non adjustable forks up front and an equally unnamed single equally non adjustable shock down back. Machined alloy pegs, all LED lighting and an LCD display. The modern 2021 aesthetic is complete, yet it is still very entry level basic. Impressively for this little thing, it comes with front and rear disc brakes and pillion pegs, though I'm pretty sure the suspension would be completely maxed out, two up. Electric motors produce all their torque from the second the throttle is cracked, so the acceleration from this little Velociraptor is actually quite impressive, and because it's light, it's very manageable even for new riders. With three gears controlled by a switch on the right hand bar, you have three levels of speed restriction. First is restricted to 25 km per hour, second is 35 km per hour, and third is 53 km per hour. The Go Charge Velociraptor is capable of propelling you up to 53 km per hour reasonably quickly, and the feeling of belting around the streets with only the sound of the wind rushing past your helmet is quite uncanny. But as a motorcycle rider of some experience, I am used to something a little more full-sized, with bigger wheels, so riding the little Velociraptor around the streets with its 13-inch wheels felt a little unstable. I was thankful for the 50 km per hour speed restriction, and I'm not sure you would want to go much faster. At slow speed, I'm used to loading up the rear brake, riding the clutch, and using the momentum of the pistons in the conventional engine to keep balance. With no conventional engine, slow speed maneuvering is not all that easy. When the brakes are engaged, the drive from the engine is cut, regardless of how much you wail on the throttle. It's not impossible to control, but it's a little bit of a learning curve. This bike has two levers in the conventional place on the bars, but where you would expect the clutch is actually the rear brake. Note to self, don't grab a handful of clutch. GVI and Go Charged call this a cafe racer inspired moped, and I think it would look right at home outside a cafe. But given its price tag of $4,999, I wonder if it's a tad overpriced for the quality of the componentry and the specs it brings to the table. Don't get me wrong, it didn't fall apart under me. It just didn't exactly inspire confidence. It felt a little entry level. Maybe I'm being overly negative on this wee machine. It is a cool wee electric scooter, and if you only need to do 50 km per hour, then it would be a cheap form of transport with no fuel costs. Even more so if you can manage to charge it up off mum and dad's power bill, you're off to a winner. If you're comparing it to conventional scooters, then it's in the upper end of the price bracket, but it's also one of the only fully electric options on the market, and in a world where burning dinosaurs is quickly going out of fashion, the price tag may be well justified. I hear Go Charged are bringing faster options in for 2021, including a fully electric motorcycle that can do 100 km per hour, so we can't wait to test out future offerings. Let's also not forget that barring Harley Davidson and a few minor entries into the electric market, most motorcycle brands seem reluctant to bring out fully electric options. So GVI and Go Charged, high five. For more information on the Wii Go Charged Velociraptor, go to gvi.kiwi.